Hi, I'm Diane Marie Collins, and you have entered the DM Zone. We are here at UNR, University of Nevada, Reno, and at Nightingale Hall. Why? Because we are going to be treated to a wonderful concert with two jazz greats, Ellis Marcellus Jr. and his son, Delfeo Marcellus. The trombonist who has been noted as one of the best and brightest and most innovative of his generation. I'm, I'm going to learn how to correctly say it. Delfio. 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 Just like Romeo, Delfio. Oh, now I'm going to have to call him Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my name is Diane Marie Collins, and I'm part of the DM Zone, and I am so pleased to be interviewing you. This is a little unique for us, but I've done it with Ben Carson, so it's okay. Okay, yes, indeed. No um, I know you started your musical career when you were 13, and you have been described as one of the best, most innovative, and musical trombonists, but you said the trombone chose you, so tell me how. Right. Well... If you're from New Orleans, you actually start your musical career at birth because <laughs> there's music everywhere. You know, it's nothing like it. Um, so it's almost something that e even if you end up not playing music professionally, you have that in your bones. And, you know, everybody knows the second line in that particular song or when the saints. So I I'd say it's, it's just something about the New Orleans uh, culture that we maintain and uh, we try to represent that in our music. Now, I know you also are very involved with education, especially youth, because it's like pass the music on. But jazz, how important is that to you to continue sharing jazz with young people, our kids today? Right. Well, it's uh, not only jazz, but, you know, my, my family, my parents were very, um, for us at least, I'd say the main thing was that we were well-rounded and that we had an understanding of all types of art and culture. We'd have family meetings, and my mother, you know, we hated it. We were like, oh, man, come on, y'all. <laughs> mom. But, you know, my mom would read us poetry, um, and uh, she'd also, we'd have art books. So there would, it was just the idea that there's so much out here, and there's so many things that you could learn and grow from that we've always tried to take that kind of a, a well-rounded approach to anything that we do. Now, the, this tour, The Last Southern Gentleman, the tour and the CD, where did the inspiration come for this eclectic gathering? I mean, anything from the theme from the Sesame to Flintstone to one of my favorite, a classic Autumn Leaves, which I even sang in high school choir. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, the idea is uh, I, I read an article and it was uh, Baby Dodds, who was a great drummer, played with uh, Louis Armstrong, amongst others. And he was saying that they always played music for the people. And he said they would play so soft that you could hear the people's feet as they danced. <laughs> and it made me realize that the, the main trait that we need to keep going is the sense of humility and humanity in the music. And nowadays the difficulty is in schools, we teach the kids about the scales and we teach them about the harmony and this and that. But there's a, a genuine thing. I, I always say it's the African traditions that we keep and maintain in New Orleans that not only gives the city its uniqueness, but that gives the music that, that vibrance and, you know, that, that love and that emotion. And that's what we always try to capture when we play. Well, it's a wonderful CD, and I'm excited about the tour and this concert. One other quick question for you. You start, you've done it all. You do it all. Producing, oh, performing. Yeah. Um, you've, pr you've produced greats like Harry Connick Jr., one of my favorite. I got to meet him at Montreal Jazz Festival. But you've got... If you had to choose, and then the education, if you had to choose just one, which would it be? Well, it's like, you know, which of your children would you choose? <laughs> <laughs> Cut them in half. No, give them to someone else. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't choose, and I say it's all the same. When you're performing, it's the same as, as producing. Which, you know, there are similarities, I would say. And uh, they've all helped me to get to this point where I am right now, this moment, and I'm looking forward to sharing the stage with my illustrious padre. Proud Papa, if he can come on out, we're going to start an interview with him. Thank you. <laughs> We have been enjoying the Performing Arts Series at University of Nevada, Reno. You have been in the DM Zone. Come back soon.